All right, man, how you guys doing? This is Neil from PerfectSunLED.com, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys from raw salts, salts, you can buy your salts online and make your own hydroponic nutrient. That's gonna be very high quality, even higher quality than Floronova. Floronova's not a super high quality anyway. Uh, they get their nitrogen from a lot of, uh, like ammonia, so not really, there's not too many ammonia sources, but they do get some of their nitrogen from ammonia sources. And you, you definitely don't want much ammonia sources in your hydroponics because they become toxic to your plants. But anyway, so um, their balance here is pretty good though for where you can just you can just use this for the entire grow. If you use something like CalMag um, by Botanicare, which will give you some of the extra nitrogen that you'll need because that's a little bit low, but it's actually should be fine even so. But if you add the CalMag, it'll definitely make up for that. And so one thing to look at is, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys all the measurements, the math you need to do, like everything you need to do, you need to know to sit down and make your own hydroponic nutrient. And it's from basalt. We're not going to be using some like master blend and then just adding a little bit of cow mag or something like that. I know I see a lot of videos like that. That's what we're doing. We're actually going to make your own nutrient. In the same way I showed you, you know, how you can make your own fulvic acid and cow mag in the other video. Um, and you can actually use that cow mag. I would make a cow mag out of um, calcium nitrate and magnesium nitrate for this formula so that we have that extra nitrogen and then use like an EDTA. By the way, if you use disodium uh, EDTA, that doesn't like to um, dissolve in regular pH water. So you want to use like pH up in the water first and get your water up to get the, get your distilled water up to like 10 and then it will dissolve really well. And then you can pH it back down. Anyway, so stuff you're going to need. One, you'll need distilled water or RO water. So don't cheap out on that. Just go to the store and get distilled water. You're absolutely going to need that. Don't use like tap water, right? So go get distilled water. Okay, that's important. And then I'll show you the different chemicals and stuff that you can buy even on Amazon. And the price will be about, if you're only buying small amounts at a time, like a pound at a time. I know a pound sounds like a lot, but it's really not considered like, you know, the salt you get. That's a pound. It's really not that much. But um, you'll be using like, you know, half a pound for some of this stuff. So to make a liter. So it's really not that much when you think about it. But you should be able to make it for about $10 uh, a liter. So that's actually not bad considering liters of nutrients are usually like around for each liter um, of both the A and the B have to buy each one separately. It's usually around $15 to $20 depending on the nutrient line. And so you're saving some money there. Now, if you buy more at a time, you can drastically drop that price. So if you, instead of buying a pound, you buy five pounds at a time, you can probably drop that down to about, you know, seven dollars a liter maybe even down to five if you buy like 20 pounds at a time you can drop it down significantly more all right so you're, you have to spend a lot of more a lot more money up front though you're talking a few hundred dollars you know to buy 20 pounds of each thing at least a few hundred dollars uh, under a thousand though but you're you're gonna be buying a decent amount anyway it's gonna be expensive kind of just to get started but it's gonna last you a super long time and you'll be saving a lot of money in the long run a lot of people don't like to think in the long term though. Uh, how do I know this? Because a lot of people continue to buy liters, even though they're going through liters of, of nutrients, like every, like let's say at least once a grow or twice a grow, they're going through these liters and they keep buying the liters instead of going and buying a gallon of the same stuff. Like, yeah, it's it costs more at first, but you're you're saving like half the money. You're spending half the money. So if you're going through a liter like every grow, then why not just go buy the gallon, which will last you like four grows anyway. And especially if it's chemical nutrients, it'll pretty much last forever on the shelf. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, there's different ways we can try to achieve this. So the main way, and I'm going to be showing you guys the all of the math, everything you need to do. And also I'm going to be showing you guys stuff like, um, like an equation like this that I came up with that you can use to figure out how much of this nutrient do you feed your plants to get a target PPM. And it's actually pretty pretty easy. And then this is like using target PPM for tomatoes is a really, really good start um, for what our, what we want our target nutrient to be able to do at a certain feeding, like let's say three milliliters per liter, which is like 11 milliliters per gallon, which is pretty much what you feed with most nutrients. Like that's what you feed with um, platinum series uh, psycho flower, sorry. Anyway, so you have... Our target for for uh, nitrogen here, um, about 150 is a good target if you just want to use it for the entire grow. Um, tomatoes sometimes need a lot more nitrogen than marijuana needs. So I think about 120 to 150 is a really good target. And then uh, another one that's important to look at would be your 
these two numbers here. So your phosphorus, notice phosphorus isn't very much. They don't need a lot of a lot of phosphorus. They really don't. It's really easy to overdo phosphorus. You don't want to have a lot of this into in your nutrient. And then if, he, if you want more um, potassium, notice that tomatoes have a pretty high need, 350 ppm as a final part. That's like so of that 800, 900, you know, 1200 ppm that you're feeding your plant towards the end of their their you know 350 of those ppms. That's a lot, right? <laughs> are going to be potassium. In this case, we're not going to need to go that high. There's no reason to go that high. Um, you won't even probably go that high even after you add a PK booster. Um, so PK boosters usually add another, you know, 70 ppm, something like that when you feed as recommended. All right, so let's go ahead and get started then. This all makes sense in this video. Like I'm going to explain why we're going for these targets because that's what the plants, you know, like there's been so much scientific study, you know, taking samples from the tissues of the plants and, and seeing how much of each thing they're eating. That, that's how they come up with that formula. Like they, they know this is what the tomato plant needs to stay super healthy. And tomato plants, marijuana plants are very similar to what they need. Okay, so let's go ahead and get over here. So the first thing we're going to need is monopotassium. No, that's, no, that's not what we're going to need. Hold on. We're not going to be using that at all, actually. Okay, hold on. Where did I... I thought it was that five minute mark. Sorry, I'm just, I've pre recorded all this, so that would be faster than if I did it in real time. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need is calcium nitrate. Like I said, there's different ways we can do it. So, for example, we need to re, we need so much nitrogen in there. Well, there's only so many sources of nitrogen. Calcium nitrate is a great source of, of nitrogen. One, because we need calcium anyways, and we need the nitrogen, so it has both in there. Another way to get it is with potassium nitrate. We could do that, but I decided not to. I decided to go with magnesium nitrate because we need magnesium as well rather than magnesium sulfate. The reason why that is is because potassium sulfate is actually really good for, for um, potassium, but magnesium sulfate is not as good of a source of magnesium. So it just uh, that's one reason. So we're getting high-quality stuff the plant needs. And then another reason is because potassium sulfate just I need to get that sulfur in there somehow and I need I need extra potassium in there as well and so that helps boost up the potassium a little bit um, and get the calcium that or the, excuse me get the sulfur that we need sulfur is super important sulfur is as 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 important as magnesium and calcium so it's a super important thing to have in nutrient you don't want to skimp on it and so that's why we make sure we have that in there so that's that's how I decide to go and get those main things and then we're going to use a really good um, mix of uh, already balanced hydroponic mix that's really not that expensive and it'll last you a super long time because we're not going to be using that much of it for all our micronutrients. And then we'll be using a sodium benzoate for a preservative for the B part. Now, another thing to keep in mind uh, when if you ever want to try to do your own formulas and stuff and, and vary off of what I'm showing you here. By the way, this is not anywhere like my formula. I just want to show you an easy way that's not that expensive to make your own hydroponic nutrients. That's going to work well for you as well as Floranova, if not better, because the ingredients are going to be better. And save and save yourself some money, some money in the process. Um, anyway, so... A couple things you want to know is that calcium nitrate cannot mix with many other things. That's why you have an A, a part A and part B. But Neil, you're asking me, how is it that General Hydroponics is able to make a one part series? Why can't I just do that? Because there's a, there's a lot of science that goes into that bottle, right? Um, they have so one, it's at a kind of a lower because sometimes people make um, solutions, stock solutions that are like one in 250, meaning for every one part, let's say a gallon, will feed, will make 250 gallons. So Floranova is one in 100. So for every one gallon, it'll make 100 gallons. And so they have to, they have, to have it in a lower concentration so that it'll stay stable. Another thing, they have to adjust the pH and stuff like that to make it stable. So it's actually kind of difficult to do, and I don't recommend trying it. Um, a and B is so much easier. Why do you why do you care if you're just using two bottles? It's really not that big of a deal that you just measure equal equal amounts from each bottle and put it into your water, right? So the things you don't definitely do not want to mix with calcium nitrate is you do not want to mix magnesium sulfate or any sort of sulfate, potassium sulfate, etc. So no sulfur, and you don't want to mix um, phosphorus, right? So no phosphorus, no sulfurs. And so that, that's why there's an A and B, right? Because it's kind of impossible to make a nutrient that doesn't have sulfurs or phosphates in it, right? You have to have those in your nutrient line. And so, I mean, I guess you can go, well, I'll put everything in there except for sulfur, and then I'll just add sulfur by itself separately. Well, that's still part A and B, isn't it? You're still having to add something else to it or make everything except for calcium, and I'll just 
or maybe everything except for calcium and magnesium, and I'll just add CalMag to it. But you know, then is it a high quality CalMag that has no nitrogen, or you're adding extra nitrogen anyway? So either way, it's kind of like an AB, right? You see how that works. So all right. The first thing we're going to need is a calcium nitrate. And you can see here, um, gardentech.ca, you can go through some of their products and get pretty decent prices, it looks like. You can also look up calcium nitrate on Amazon and make sure that you're not buying like vitamins. Make sure you're buying, you know, like something more for fertilizer. Uh, you are alive. This was a really good company, a uh, really high quality calcium nitrate, very soluble in water. So highly recommended. And the prices aren't too bad. And then you got to look and see, does it show you the percentages? And I don't think this one does. I mean, so, so basically, you just look up calcium nitrate yar alive. And this is going to be like 90% calcium and I think 15.5% nitrogen. And you click on that, go to the website, and there you go. 15.5% nitrogen, 90% calcium. We need to know that so we know how much to add. So that's why I'm going through that. And I think I'm going to go ahead and go like this so I can have a little more control over how fast I go. All right, so this is the um, equation we're going to be using to figure out the percentages, like what, what we're going to do. So this first part of the equation, really easy to understand. The first part of the equation, this just, if you don't know how to make a percent into a decimal, so you can, you can work with it in this math, this is how you do it. You just divide the number by 100. So if, you're, if your target, right, in this case, the target we want to reach, um, let's say, is 3.2% uh, in the solution. So we want our stock solution to have 3.2%, whatever, let's say calcium. Then we're divide 3.2 divided by 100 and we get zero or 0 0.032 and that's the decimal point. So in other words, that number 0 0.032 means the same thing as 3.2%, right? It's just another way to write it in decimal. So that's that. And then the second part of the equation is we're gonna take that percent and decimal and times it by a thousand. And this gives us how many grams it would take to have 3.2% of that inside of a, a liquid. That is a thousand milliliters, right? And so everything we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be doing it for a thousand milliliters because it makes the math easy. And then you can always scale that up if you need to or scale it down. But in this case, that's your target. But if you wanna make a gallon at a time, you just scale that up to like times it by 3.8, right? Because there's like, that, that's how many liters are in a gallon. Or you can just, you just scale up to four liters or something like that. So it's like a little more, over, a little over a gallon. Anyway, so that's why we have the thousand. So what we're doing is we're going this percent into a, so how, how much is that? Well, 32 grams. So if I use 32 grams of, let's say something that's a hundred percent that chemical, let's say there's a, such a thing as a hundred percent calcium, which would actually be a metal. But um, in this case, let's just say we had like hundred percent salt or something. That's how much salt I was making a salt brine. Well, in this case, I would just do 32 grams per 1000 liters of water. And then I had to have my solution. Um, and if you want to be super accurate, you would add the salt in with almost enough water and then uh, like less than a thousand milliliters, like maybe 800. And then you would fill up the rest after you add the salt and that would give you a perfect uh, solution. Okay, anyway, the last part of this is we, we save that number. So whatever that number is, you save it. Well, that's we can't just use that number. Why? Well, because that's not how much calcium is in calcium nitrate, right? It was 19%. So we have to figure out that. So this is the second part of the equation. You do 1 divided by 100, sorry, 100 divided by 19. So if 19% is how much is in the product, so of calcium nitrate, 19% of it is calcium, then we do 100 divided by 19, and then that gives us the number right here. And then you times that by this original number that we got from the first part of the equation, times 32. And that will give you the exact amount of grams you use per 1,000 milliliters of water in order to hit your target of 3.2% in that solution. So 168.4 grams is what you measure. You want to make this pretty accurate, by the way, especially when you're working with small amounts. Make it as accurate as possible. So you need like a you need a um, very accurate scale, like a 100 scale or whatever, unless you're making bigger amounts of it, but you'll still need that for the micronutrients anyway. So I recommend two scales um, or, or one scale if it, if it can go enough, but you need a really fine scale, like a one one hundredth of a, of a gram. And then another one that's just like, you know, one tenth of a gram or whatever. Okay. So that's that equation. That's how it works. And so I'm just showing over here on the calculator. We're going to go, okay, what if we're shooting for, you know, for, 4%, and so we do 4 divided by 100, and that gives us the decimal of 0 0.04, and we're going to times that by 1,000, and that gives us 40. And you can, after a while, you can kind of, like, the, working with 1,000 is really easy, so after a while, you can kind of just start knowing what it's going to be. You can go, oh, 4% is going to be 40 grams, like it's not that hard to, to do that. You can just do that in your head. 
And anyway, so then we're going to go, what's our target? So 100 divided by 19. So our target is 19%. Because remember, we're trying to figure out how much we want to have a certain target of our calcium and nitrogen in there. And in this case, we're, we're, the target of this uh, brand was 4% calcium. So that's why I'm using 4%. So I'm showing you what we need to do in order to get that 14%. So there was 19% calcium and calcium nitrate. So that's where we're doing 100 divided by 19, get this number here. And then we're going to times that by 40, that original number that we got, because we we're going for 4%. And that gives us 210.5 grams. And so you can write that down. This is how many grams of calcium nitrate I'm going to need to hit my target of 4% calcium. All right, so you do calcium. I have pal talk up. That's why that little ad popped up there. There's no way to, even with my ad, ad blocker, it still comes up. Even even paying them, it still comes up. It's just stupid. Right, so target of calcium, 4%. And so I'm using 210.5 grams per liter. And now we got to figure out how much nitrogen we need. So this other equation I have up here shows you, you can find out how much nitrogen is in that 210 grams, right? So we know we're feeding 210 grams to get that 4% calcium. We know nitrogen is also in calcium nitrate. So how much nitrogen am I getting for free out of that? Because remember, I need the calcium regardless. So the calcium has to be there. And so how much nitrogen am I getting out of that? Well, the equation's pretty simple that I came up with. Now, there's probably better equations for some of this stuff. But th this one equation I came up with, I saw some other people that try to do this and they have to use like two different equations and it's a lot more complicated. Mine's super simple, like it's super easy to do and it gives you, anyway, we'll get, we'll get to that. Um, let's go back to the video, there we go. Okay, so this equation is super simple. All you do is you take the grams you're using. So, and I, I didn't bother writing it out like the actual equation would be for, you know, like X and stuff anyway. I could do that if, that if that would be beneficial for someone, but I think just understanding how it works is pretty easy. So anyway, uh, you take the 210 in this case, so 210 grams or 210.5, and you want to times it by the percent of the other ingredients. So in this case, you want to times it by how much nitrogen is in that product. And you want to make sure you times it by the actual percent. And I'll show you that in the calculator in a second. So 210 grams times 15.5, because that's how much nitrogen is in, is in calcium nitrate percent and that will give you the amount of grams and this is not the right number we'll see it in a second and then once you have that number you want to divide it by a thousand the milliliters and then times it by 100 to get back to the back to percents as we understand them without a dozen not non-decimal percent you know so anyway that's how it works let's go ahead and see it real quick so we have the 2.10 grams And so notice on the calculator, I'm going to try to go slow here, sorry, 210 grams times 15.5, and they hit the percent symbol, and then that gives us this 32.6, right? So of that 210 grams, 32.6 grams of that is, is the nitrogen. And then we need to divide that by 1,000 times 100 to get the amount of percent of nitrogen we're getting in our stock solution. And so, uh, by the way, some calculators, the the percent you have to hit equals after. I really like the calculator on my phone because it just tells me right away as I'm hitting all the numbers. All right, so divide that by thousands. Also, you might have to equal sign every time if you're using like your computer calculator because it's stupid and it doesn't allow you just to do a big string of stuff together without hitting equal sign. Otherwise, you get you get the wrong the wrong numbers at the end. So anyway, I'm going divided by a thousand and then times a hundred. And that gives me 3.26%. So now I know that I'm getting 3.26% nitrogen in my stock solution. So that's pretty good. And I just want to put calcium nitrate next to the, both of those. So I know that I'm deriving these two things from calcium nitrate. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and go to the next part of the video. All right, so... I think I talk about some stuff here, like um, basically what I've already talked about, like how are we going to get all these stuff that we want? And I'm like thinking about it in the video because I'm doing the, I was doing the video live and hey, come on, come on, you're going to come on camera real quick. Look at, 
Yeah, look at this. This is the new little puppy. He's so hyper right now. Wanna be on camera? He's like, no, I don't like going. I don't like to be on camera. So anyway, there he is. All right, cool. So how much is this going to cost us so far? So here's the equation that I came up with to figure that out. So let's say we're spending uh, for one kilogram, we're spending six dollars. I think that's two point two pounds. And so what we're going to do is we're going to be using uh, this equation, right? Hold on, where is it at? Oh, right here. This equation right here, really simple. You just take the amount of grams that you're using of that product, divide it by the amount of grams in a pound, which is 454, and then times that by the price that you're paying. So in this case, I didn't put a number sign, but that's $12 in that case for the, for the example. So you do 210, divide 210 by 454, and then we're gonna times that by the amount we're paying, $1.81. So I think it's because I got the dollar eighty one from that two point two pounds. So you do the two point two pounds divided by that six dollars, whatever. And so now I can put here we're paying eighty three cents. That's not bad, eighty three cents so far. The one that's going to probably be, the, I think, if I remember, the most expensive is going to be the monopotassium uh, phosphate. Wait, do I decide to actually go with magnesium sulfate in this one? And then we'll use we'll use potassium nitrate for nitrogen. Maybe I do decide to go that way. So right here, what I'm showing is that how many kilograms are in a pound, or how many you know how many pounds you get from one kilogram. We get two point two. So so then if you take this this amount here, eight dollars and divide that by 2.2, that will give you how much you're paying per pound. That should be math that you can just figure out on your own, like without any equation, just use logic and think about it. And so here I'm just looking up, um, you know, like if, I, cause it, the site didn't tell me. So I need to look up what's typical for how much, how much, um, Magnesium and sulfur is in is in Epsom salts. Uh, Nine point eight percent magnesium and twelve point nine percent sulfur. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do the same equation that we did before. And our target here, we're going for two percent magnesium. So two divided by hundred to give us a decimal, and then we're going to times that by a thousand to get the number and twenty. And so, like I said, that part, I really can just do that in your head, but I just want to show just in case, but like 2% is going to be 20 grams and you can just kind of start to get a feel for what these numbers are going to be. All right. So then we need to go 100 divided by 12.9% because remember that's how much magnesium is in Epsom salts or magnesium sulfate, same thing. And you can literally just buy Epsom salts just in case you're wondering, or if you already have Epsom salts, you can just use that. And so I think I decided to do it this way because it actually is cheaper for you. Um, but if you wanted to do the other way around, you can. The math isn't that much different. And just figure you can figure it out by, by this video should be enough knowledge for you to do that. And then you can buy the magnesium nitrate and then you would use potassium sulfate instead. So you're just flipping those two around. Okay, sorry about that. So, and then we want to times that by 20 because that was the amount of grams that or originally the first part of the equation we're using this equation here so the first part gave us 20 this part and then you times it by that 20 so same thing we did for the calcium and that gives us 155 grams so we need to use 155 grams of epsom salts or magnesium sulfate and then, and then we go okay well how much um sulfur are we going to get out of that right because we need to we need to have sulfur in our product oh no sorry okay I know what I did here. Instead, I used I used that percent. Use it wasn't how much magnesium. Magnesium was like 9.6 percent. That 12 point whatever, 8 percent whatever. That was how much sulfur is in magnesium sulfate. My bad. And so I wanted to calculate for the sulfur first because I know I have a target of 2 percent. 
and then and then I'll see how much magnesium I get out of that. And if we need more, we can add more magnesium or see if we get close to it. All right, so the first thing I do before I actually figure out how much magnesium this gives me, I'm gonna I do the price. Like how much is this gonna cost for the magne or, or for the Epsom salts? And so to do that, we're gonna take the uh, amount we're buying. And I think you can buy, I don't know why, I, I should have went somewhere else because I, I think you can probably buy it cheaper for like a pound of Epsom salts on Amazon. So just do that. It won't be, I don't think it's gonna cost you nearly this much. And so I just wanna see like how much is five kilograms of pounds and then divide this together to figure out how much I'm paying per pound. And then once we have the amount per pound, I'm going to go with the amount I'm using here, 155 grams, and then divide that by 454. And then times that by the price we're paying. Now I've shown you also if you buy less of it, how much you charge. So if you bought a lot less of the magnesium sulfate, it's gonna cost a dollar twenty-three. If you bought more of it, it only costs you seventy-one cents. So definitely look around um, for some prices on Epsom salt. I think if you just buy Epsom salt Amazon, it might be actually cheaper than that. And actually, out of curiosity, I'm gonna I'm gonna look on. Uh, let's look on Amazon real quick. Amazon Epsom salts. Just out of curiosity, let's see. Like, if we, we need here's so here's five pounds of it for only fifteen ninety nine. So this is actually cheaper than the other site I just showed you. Um, that's actually not a bad price. You that's kind of a steep price to have to pay to get up and going if you're just trying to make you know a couple of liters of um, your own stuff. So you want to, want to find a pound for nineteen dollars. That's pretty expensive. You see the difference here. Like you do fifty, you do like sixteen divided by five or whatever. That's gonna be much less than what you're paying here. So you might have to buy five pounds of it to really get a good deal. Let's see here. Here's eight pounds. Oh, this is a really great deal. Is that right? Eight pounds. Yeah. Epsom salt's Epsom salt. So as long as there's nothing else added to it, this is just magnesium sulfate. This is a good deal. So eight, eight, eight pounds for it's on, or if you, anyway, for $7. So you're spending less than a dollar a pound. This is good. Less than a dollar pound, that's going to be like super, like a couple cents, right? So do that. Now we're only adding a couple cents to the overall price. Okay, let's get back to the video. And then times that by the percent of, I'm going to try to go back and make sure. I, hold on, let me just try to show you this. I don't want to just say it because I, I like visuals. So let's try to go slow. 155, and then you want to hit the time sign. And then times that by 9.8, hit the percent sign. That's wrong. I didn't hit the percent signs. That's why I'm like, wait a minute, what just went on? And I can't, I have to like go back now because it doesn't let me just back up. Like my calculator on my uh, phone, it lets me back up if I make a mistake and just hit like the back button and it just erases that part of the equation. Hit the percent sign, then hit equals. And then you want to, then once you have that number, then just divide it by a thousand and then times it by a hundred and that will give you 1.5%. Thousand and a hundred and boom, we got 1.5%. So that's how we got the 1.5%. So now we know we have 1.5% magnesium, but we need a little bit more. Uh, I think we need a little bit more. So, because it was like 2% was our target from Floranova. And we'll get that from magnesium nitrate. And that will give us a little extra nitrogen as well. If you go to something like um, Horde Americas, you can get magnesium nitrate. And Haifa is a really good company, really high quality um, magnesium nitrate. And you can get it for a really good deal here, uh, 25 kilograms for 45 bucks. Kilograms, is, that's going to be a lot of pounds. I think that's 55 pounds. It's either 55 or 57. Yeah, so 55 divided by 45 so you're spending a dollar 22 per pound really good deal but you have to have that 45 dollars up front but 45 dollars up front isn't too much if you think about it and this is going to last you quite a while 55 pounds will make a lot of a lot of nutrients for you and if you buy this you might be able to just use that instead of and then use the potassium sulfate for the other thing all right anyway um actually 
Oh, my bad. I did it. I did it backwards. You want to do the price first. Always divide the price. Or when you're dividing to figure out how much you're paying per pound, always do the price first divided by the amount. So, sorry, it's actually only 81 cents per pound. Super good deal. 81 cents per pound, right? And you're not even using a pound to make a liter. So, and then if you don't want to buy that much, you're like, I don't have that much money to just spend right now on just one one ingredient that goes into my nutrients. Okay, we'll go to Amazon here and you can see we have two pounds for $16. So two divided by six or 16 divided by uh, two is gonna give us $8 a pound. So notice the difference in price, right? If you buy less amount, yeah, you're spending less money up front, but look how much you're paying per pound versus 81 cents. $8 versus 81 cents. If you can, if you can somehow get the money, you know, to buy the extra amount, it's definitely worth it because you're saving so much more money. But even at this price, we're still going to be saving money, believe it or not, by making our own nutrient. And that's insane when you think about it. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out how I would, I need to make up for the rest of that magnesium. So basically we're missing 0.5% of magnesium. And so we take the 0.5% magnesium that we need because we have 1.5. We need we want a target of two. And honestly, this would have been fine. You can actually you can actually you don't. But this gives us the extra nitrogen anyway, so you kind of need this. But um, we really didn't need the extra. I don't think we need the 1.5% magnesium. But anyway, you take the percent right. So we need we need 0.5%. This isn't a decimal. This is actually how much percent we need. We need to turn that into a decimal by dividing it by 100. And that gives us 0 0.005 as a decimal. And then we need to times that by 1,000, which gives us 5. So we know we need 5 grams of calcium nitrate. Well, actually, we don't need 5 grams. Sorry. That's the number that we're saving. To figure out how much, we do need to figure out how much nitrogen, or in this case, how much magnesium is in this product, because that's what we're shooting. That's our target right now. So 9.6%. So now we need to take that five grams and we're going to times it. We're, we're going to times this number here. So we take a hundred divided by 9.6, not 9.6%, just a hundred divided by 9.6. And that gives us 10.41. We need to times that by five. That was the original number we got. We're using this equation here. So the first part of the equation gave us five. The second part of the equation, we're timesing it by that five that we came up with. And that gives us our target of 52 grams. So we're using 52 grams of magnesium nitrate to hit our target of 0.5% um, magnesium. And by the way, I don't know why I put MGN. I think it was, a it was just a typo. It's just MG. And look at even at this at this crazy price of eight dollars a pound, it's costing us 91 91 cents. Now imagine. Instead of, imagine if you took that and times it, instead of by eight, you times it by 0.8. You'd be like literally pennies, folks, pennies, like, like such a small amount, right? Almost nothing. So if you buy that, if you spend that $45, you're going to be spending so much less. All right, so now we got to do nitrogen. So how much nitrogen is in that? We take the amount of grams we're using, which is 55. We're going to times that by the actual... Um, percent 55 times okay hold on i gotta make this zoomed in a little bit more so i could have finer controls over this so 55 grams and we're going to times that by the amount of percent of nitrogen and calcium nitrate and that's 11 percent so you do it 55 times 11 and hit the percent sign and hit equals okay so that's how many grams. So of the 55 grams, six, six grams of that is nitrogen. By the way, you're wondering, well, what's all this stuff? The other stuff is like salts and stuff. So, yeah. And then you divide that by 1,000 and then times it by 100, and that gives us 0.6% nitrogen. So we've added 0.6% nitrogen to our product, to our stock solution here. And by the way, this will be what you... Oh man, hold on. This will be what you use to feed your plants at about three milliliters per liter or about 11 milliliters per gallon. So you add that to a gallon of water. So this is basically give your, your own bottles of nutrients that you'd buy at a store. 
just in case that wasn't clear. All right, so 0.6%. And then we'll see how close that gets us to our target here. All right, so that actually got us pretty close to our target because we got 3.25% here and 6.6% here. So that gives us 3.85%. So that's pretty close to four. And we can call that close enough. We don't have to try to add anything else to get more nitrogen. I think that's more than close enough. And like I said, if you feed with th throughout the whole grow something like Botanicaris Calmag, it'll make up for that nitrogen you're going to need anyway. Even if you're using Florinova, you want to add some of that extra nitrogen and you need a little more extra Calmag too. Um, and so there you'll have it with those. So, all right. The next thing we're going to need is monopotassium uh, sulfate. And so I'm just typing it up here in this, the gardentech.ca. And let's see what kind of prices we can find for this stuff. So it looks like um, one kilogram, so 2.2 pounds is going to be $15. That's not too bad. Um, you might want to like shop around and see what the kind of prices you can buy. And you know how much money do you have to spend up front? Because you remember, you're going to be making several, you'll be able to make several liters, um, at least a couple liters, and you're going to be saving money. It's an, overall, the liters are going to cost you a lot less. So we got to look at the percentages. So we have 22.7% uh, phosphorus. Now that's how much actual the elements in there, but that's not how the numbers are listed on bottles. The numbers listed on bottles go by the P2O5, the phosphorus oxide at 52.1%. So this is, and the K2O, these are the numbers, the oxide numbers are the numbers that show up on bottles. So when you go to a store and you buy a nutrient, it's like, uh, a four, five, eight. That five and eight, the phosphorus and calcium, is based on the oxide numbers here. There's a simple equation to turn these numbers into these numbers, which you'll need to do if you want to figure out like the amount of PPMs you're feeding your plants. But as far as making the nutrient, you need to go by the oxide numbers. Basically, um, phosphorus is going to, that, that is P, is going to be multiplied. You multiply 52.1% times 0.43, and that gives you this number. And then the K2O, the calcium oxide, not calcium, what the fuck am I talking about? The uh, potassium oxide, you're going to do 34.5% times 0.83, and that's going to give you this number here. Okay, so we don't need to do that, know that yet. We just need to know these numbers, these two numbers here. All right, so to find the percentages, because I couldn't find it on the Amazon product of monopotassium um, phosphate, we go to Haifa, and we can see the, the numbers here. So these are the two numbers we want, the oxide numbers, the P2O5 and the K2O. These are the ones we want. All right, so 52 and 34. Let me kind of zoom in a bit here so I have more fidelity as I zoom through or as I fast forward through this. So here I found some monopotassium... Uh, phosphate on Amazon, and it looks like one pound is going to be thirty-one dollars. This is quite expensive. Now, this stuff is expensive anyway. This is going to be the most expensive stuff, even if you buy it in bulk. Like if you find a fifty-five pound of Haifa, you're still going to be spending a lot of money. Um, I think it's going to be like, I don't know, three hundred dollars or something. So, just know this is this product is expensive. This is going to be the most expensive part of your nutrient. So. What a lot of people do, what a lot of companies do, is they try to use the least of it as possible, <laughs> even though it's a really high quality product and it's what you should be using to get your PK in there. Um, they're gonna they're gonna try to skimp on as much as possible and use ammoniums like ammonium phosphate and ammonium uh, potassium or potassium ammonium whatever it's called, and that's gonna give you they're gonna get their nitrogen from that and their P and K from that, but the nitrogen's not nearly as good. Um, and also, it, it can be very toxic to your plants, very easily to be toxic to your plants in hydro. So I don't recommend it. If you're gardening in soil, fine. But if you're gardening in soil, you might as well use organics. And the only reason why you want to do that is because you're a huge farmer and you need to save money because you have a lot of land. But, I mean, if you just have a little garden or whatever, you're growing indoors with soil, just do organics. It's totally worth it. Okay, so what we need to do here is math. And I think I'm forwarding past the math part. All right, so we're going to shoot for that 8%. So our target of, of phosphorus is going to be 8%. But remember, the 8% is going to be the oxide, right? Because that's how Florinova, is, they're listing it by the oxide. So we're going to do 100 divided by 8, and that's going to give us our decimal. And then times that by 1,000, that's going to give us 80 grams. So we know we need 80 grams, and at least that's the placeholder number. And now we need to figure out 
Um, oh, did I go buy it already? Oh, here we go. We need to figure out the uh, 100 divided by 52. So remember, remember that uh, the other number of the oxide part of the number of phosphorus was 52%. And so we do 100 divided by 52 and then times that by 80. And that's going to give us times that by 80 equals, and that gives us 153.8 grams. Okay, so now we know of this product, we need 153.8 grams of it in order to reach that target of 8% potassium, or not potassium, phosphorus. I don't, it's like, it gets confusing sometimes because, like, um, you know, it's a P. Both are P's, but it's PK. All right, so once we have that, I want to figure out the price. So we go, okay, or am I doing the price, or am I doing... Um, I know I need uh, 34%. And remember, these numbers here are the oxide numbers. What That's what we actually want. This isn't the actual amount of element in there. They're using the oxide numbers. That's typically what, what will happen. And if you're ever wondering if it's right or not, then these numbers should be quite big, and it should be that the phosphorus number is bigger than potassium. But these numbers flip around if it's the element. That is, potassium number will be bigger. Okay, so yeah, I'm doing this part of the math now. So let's go ahead and do 153.8 grams, and we're going to multiply that by 34% and equals, and that gives us 52.3 grams. So of those grams, 52 of those grams are, are potassium, are K, or actually potassium oxide, because that's what we're that's what the math we're doing right now. And then we need to um, divide that by a thousand, then times it by a hundred. And that gives us 5.23%. So now we know how much potassium that we just put in there. We put 5.2%. So this is why often when you buy bottles of nutrient, especially your bloom nutrient, oftentimes this middle number will be bigger than the outer number. It's because of they're using the oxide numbers. But actually, when you do the math to convert that to the element, actually how much of that element that the plant is using or is in the plant, they're reversed. And you can just do the math real quick. Do 5.2 times... Um, 0.83 and then 8% times 0.43, and you'll see those numbers reverse. Suddenly, there's more potassium that the, that's available to the plant. And then I think I'm going to do the price, and this is where it's going to be crazy. Now, you can you can get this stuff for a way better price than this if you buy it buy more at a time. So just shop around if you have more money to spend. But like I said, this stuff is expensive, so expect to be spending. If you buy like five pounds, it's going to it's going to be you know, yeah, it's going to be cheaper than $31 a pound, but I think it's still going to be about $8, $9 a pound that if you buy five pounds at a time. If you buy like 20 pounds at a time, you might be able to get it down to like, I don't know, $4 a pound, between three and five, something like that. Depends where you, where you try to find it. I think it's going to be something like that, though. All right, so let's take the overall grams you're using. So we're using 153.8 grams. Divide that by 454 grams for per pound, and then times that by the amount we're paying, which is $31. And this is where the big bulk of your money comes from at $10.08. Now, most everything else, if you get it the way I showed, um, this shouldn't be $1.48. The calcium nitrate, remember I showed another place to get it, I think, for a lot cheaper than that. All right, so with a little bit of searching, I was able to find this listing here on Amazon. And so here we have monopotassium phosphate, which is what we need. And uh, the percentages are going to be about the same as in, in all monopotassium phosphate, by the way. So even if they don't list a percent, just know it's going to be the same numbers we used just now. And this this says that this is a really good a really good pure product. And one pound is costing us $19. That's a lot cheaper than the other one instead of $31. So even just doing some searching around right on Amazon, and I had to do some careful search. I think I searched specifically for MPK or something or M MKP. Um, and then that was that helped me get this. So anyway, you can find this to search for this exact thing here, and you should be able to find this. Okay, so now if we redo the math here, maybe we can get a better number. Well, I know we're going to get a better number. So 153 divided by 454, and then we're going to times that by 19.49, the amount we're paying, $6.06. .06. Ah, so much better. So 
just doing a little bit of searching around. We're still only buying a pound of it, so you're still staying staying low. You're trying to spend as least money as possible to get started. I imagine if you have more money to, to spend and you just want to save money in the long run, then obviously buy more of this stuff at somewhere else, like you know, get a 55-pound bag or a 20-pound bag or something. But you know, if you don't have much to start off with, then this is great. You can still save money. I'm just showing you how to do that. So now we got $6.60, so much better, much better price here. Right, so six dollars and sixty cents, and like I said, the calcium nitrate. Just do some searching, and you can definitely get this this price down as well. I think I was just doing some math. Oh yeah, I was just adding what we have here so far, and we're at uh, nine dollars and thirty three cents, and so that's actually not bad. And that's the bulk of what you're going to be spending, but. Because everything else that's in BN is going to be so such a little amount, it's not going to really cost anything else per liter. So even if you're stuck with these prices, I think you can get this price down more and definitely get this price down more if you buy more of it. But this one, you might not have to buy more of it to get a good price. Now, if you compare that with if you go to if you want to go and buy a bottle of Floranova, now keep in mind this is the price we're paying in total for two liters because this makes our A and our B. Remember that. We're, we're, we're doing both A and B. When you go buy another hydroponic, like if you buy um, an A and B part, like by, well, they don't have A and B, they have, they have the three part series, um, General Hydroponic does, but you're buying all three of those bottles, right? So each one you're spending, let's say $12 on. This is the price you're paying, right? So under $10 so far for two liters, not just one liter, two liters, because we're making part A and part B. And this is the total price you're paying. So you have to divide that by two. So you're only spending $5 a liter right now or under $5 a liter. So keep that in mind, under $5 a liter. Because again, if you're going to go buy a part A and part B, let's say from Platinum Series, it's $15 for part A and $15 for part B. So $30 for their, for their whole entire A and B to start watering with. And that's just for Bloom, right? And so the cheapest I've usually seen it as maybe $10 a liter for a and B, so twenty dollars. So you're spending. And that's why they're charging twenty dollars here for part for just one part. So you're spending around twenty dollars for the A and B to start growing with. You're going to be able to only spend ten dollars for your A and B. So you're already cutting the price in half, and that's using expensive ingredients, right? That is not buying them in bulk, and we're using high quality. So you can use cheaper products and you know save a little bit more money too. But I don't recommend that. Okay, so for Floranova which is their A and B in one bottle, $21, you're spending 10, you're cutting your price in half. So think about it. All right, so let's go back to gardentech.ca and we can buy this stuff here, the plant prod chelated micronutrients. Now this is a hydroponic um, chelated micronutrients, which means it's chelated with EDTA. I think they use um, just sodium DTA. Now you can go and like source out each individual micronutrient and make your own micronutrient, but it's really not necessary. This already has a really good balance. I've done all the math. The balance is really good. So it has everything pretty much what you'd want in a hydroponic nutrient at the proper balances. All you have to do is just calculate for the iron. Everything else sets itself because it's all in one thing. Uh, my only concern would be if like the, all the things were just mixed together and then um, like separate powders because the heavier elements were going to fall down. But you can see that's not what they did. They they have already mixed these. It seems like what they did is they already mixed these um, new, or these um, micronutrients together and then crystallized it and then de and dehydrated it so it crystallizes and then turned that into a powder so that way it's all thoroughly mixed. In other words, they, they mixed all the powders into a soluble, into a solution, then evaporate all the water and got crystals again. I think that's how they did it because that's the only way that would make sense to have a powder like that. Otherwise, you know, the heavier elements are going to fall and like they're not only going to be mixed, you're not going to have the proper proportion. So I'm pretty sure that's how they did it. Anyway, great stuff. So everything is already already done for you. A lot of hard work, and this is going to probably be cheaper anyways. Um, and this stuff is you use very little of it, so I wouldn't even worry about the price that this is going to cost you. So one kilogram to pounds, two point two. I was just shown because I forgot. Well, I think I was just showing so you can see that I'm not just making the number up because I don't think I forgot actually. Two point two is pretty solid in my head for one kilogram. All right, so what we're doing here is we're going to go um, the price, which we're paying $27.99. Did I show? Hold on. Oh, yeah, just $28. So we're paying $28 and divide that by 2.2. And so that's 12 
point seven. So twelve dollars and seven cents that that you're spending per pound. Now it sounds like a lot, but honestly, you're not going to be using that much of this stuff. Like luck, you'll see. This is literally going to cost us cents per liter. This will last you a long ass time. And so micros, we're going to go. We're, we're going to we're going to just calculate for the one percent iron, right? So Fe. 1% iron of this stuff, and how much is that going to cost us to get that 1%? Let's go ahead and so we can see here these other are the analysis. So the iron is 7% inside there, and so to get that 0.1%, uh, which you can see is here on Foranova. So to get the uh, some a very this will give us a very similar ratio also to pretty much any like all hydro this all this math has been done a long time ago with a bunch of plant studies and pretty much all hydroponic um, nutrients are going to use the same kind of same ratio of micronutrients because we know what plants need and that's all been figured out. All right, so the 0.1 percent divided by 100 gives us our decimal, so 0.001. And then times that by a thousand gives us the gram, so one gram. So note that we're going to be using one gram if it were 100%, but it's not, right? Because we have to do a step seven percent. So 100 divided by seven, and then we need to take that number and times it by one, and so we know that we're using 14.2 grams. 14.2 grams of this mix, which isn't bad. Like that's so low, like not as low as what you're going to see for like the the preservative, but super low. It's the lowest thing that we're doing. It doesn't really add. You'll see. Watch. So we'll divide that by the amount of pounds, and then we're going to times that by the price that we're paying per pound, and we're at 39 cents. So not bad at all. And I, I managed to get the Epsom salts down to 30 cents, by the way, um, by that, that one Amazon listing. All right. So I think I just didn't want to do all the math again because the video was getting already so long. But it's the same thing. You just do the same thing with sodium benzoate. So sodium benzoate is pretty much 100%. Just do like 99%. And we're shooting for a um, target of 0.02%. And that, and so with the target of 0.02%, you know, just do the same math I showed you before. You then, um, you know, divide that by 100 to get the decimal, and then times it by a thousand. That gives you the grams, and then, and then I think it was like two grams, and then. Um, yeah, so no, 0.2 grams, sorry. Only 0.2 grams of this stuff per per liter, folks. And so that's going to make, you know, 2,270 liters. This is going to last you, one pound of this is going to last you like forever, right? Like forever, man. The rest of your life probably. Like how, if you start making your own nutrients, like how long do you think it's going to take you to make 2,270 liters of nutrient? Probably a long, a long time, unless you're like, I don't know, going through a lot of fucking liters, but anyway, so it's like, look at this way less than a penny, right? Less than a 10th of a penny. So it hardly costs anything. There's no reason to even calculate this number. And so look at this, boom, under $10 folks, all sourced from like Amazon and like lower price, like where you can buy lower amounts of it, right? From gardentech.ca and Amazon. So you're able to spend under $10. So you're saving 50%, 50% folks, that adds up over time. So if you make your own nutrient, not only you're going to get a high quality nutrient that's going to work well for you, but you're doing it in such a way that you're saving 50% money. So instead of buying $20 a bottle, you know, or $20 per your A and B, you're only spending $10 for your A and B. So yeah, saving money over time. Now it is a little bit of work and, and I know a lot of people aren't going to want to do the work and I understand that. So here's the sodium benzoate. You can find on Amazon. Okay, so a lot of people just aren't going to want to do the work. They're like, no, Neil, I don't want to do all the work, man, because I haven't told you all the work you have to do. I've done all the math for you. I showed you like all the math you need, so you know that now you know how to make your – I gave you a recipe, right? I basically did all the hard work for you, mental work for you, and now you have the recipe, and all you have to do is follow those numbers we came up with and just put that amount of grams per liter. But how do you do all that? Well, it's not too difficult. You want – accurately measured so want to measure everything out and so by grams so get a good a good 10, 100 scale and measure everything accurately um, i recommend instead of making just one liter maybe make a couple liters at a time and then just multiply that so if you're making two liters then just multiply all those numbers by two and uh, make sure to act you know measure the accurate measure the accurate, accurately measure everything you're putting into it and so you want to start with um i would add let's see uh, hold on let's go back to that 
I would add, so calcium nitrate is going to go in its own bottle. That's part A. I, uh, let's see here. Was there any? Um, I worked it out twice, I think, for different for a better price, I think, and I had a slightly different product. I think that's what it was. So I guess ignore that one. Anyway, um, I would just put my calcium nitrate into one bottle, part A, and then everything else into part B, including the sodium benzoate. The, the calcium doesn't need the preservative. The calcium nitrate will hold like forever. So, but these other ones, you're going to want to put the, uh, this in it. So definitely don't not get this. You want to get the preservative unless you're going to be using your leaders very quickly. You know, if you don't plan on storing them for more than a month uh, or two months or something like that, you plan on using them within, like you make it and you're going to use it within a month of making it, then don't, you don't need this. Otherwise you want to put that in there. Okay. So add the calcium nitrate to, you know, so just measure this out, 210 grams, 210.5 on a scale. Then you pour that powder into the, the water. Make sure you're using like distilled water and I would, I would make sure it's warm. So heat it up first. You can just put it in a, in a good beaker or something, heat it up in a microwave, um, get it to a pretty good temperature, like a hundred degrees, 120. You don't want to get it too hot. Um, definitely make sure it's not like boiling hot, like boiling away. So if you do bring it to a boil, just let it kind of, you know, sit for a little bit or just add a little bit of cold water. Um, you don't want it warm though. You want it to be pretty hot. So if you touch it, it's like, oh yeah, it's pretty hot, but it's not like bubbling, boiling away. Anyway, so you'll find you'll fig, you'll kind of figure out how much how much time the microwave needs to do that or put it on a stove. I want to do it anyway, and then you want to you know pour the the calcium nitrate in there. Make sure you're wearing a breather mask, like a good one for painters. Make sure you're wearing gloves. Make sure you're in a good ventilated area, um, just to take safety precautions. And then you know measure this out and then dump it in there. Or you can put it into like a little beaker that has some water in it already, and then pour it into that water. And you can use a magnetic stirrer for, stirrer, for example. You can get those on Amazon, and that way it stirs it for you. Anyway, just stir that in until it's nice and dissolved. And you want to do it with each thing. So make sure as you're adding this to the to the part B, as you're adding each of these um, elements into it to stir it up and then let it dissolve before you add the next element. And I would probably start with... Um, Probably start with monopotassium phosphate and then uh, the magnesium nitrate. And then Epsom salts and then your your final plant prod mix. Yeah, something like that. So we did save some money here by not having to use potassium nitrate. Or, or even potassium sulfate, because um, if we, you know, we got our sulfur from the Epsom salt, so that's why we did that. That saves us. That saves us a good amount of money right there. Otherwise, if you used all magnesium nitrate to get your magnesium, which would have bought your nitrate dump a little bit more, then you would have had to have used um, potassium sulfate to get your sulfur, or just add, you know, pure sulfate. Um, but then you have to go through extra process to make sure that's going to dissolve in water. Anyway, so. This is a good good way to do it. So that's how I'd mix it. Um, definitely, you, you can watch like there's there is videos on YouTube that show how to mix. Look, look up how to make your own hydroponics from raw salts, and it will show you how to mix everything up. The, he has a different formula, but this formula is going to be really good, and uh, it's inexpensive. So all right, and it's and it's really close to Floronova. So if you know Floronova, and Floronova works great. I used to grow it all the time. It actually works really good. You definitely want to use CalMag with it, though, so make sure to pick up some CalMag or watch my other video and make your own CalMag. Calcium nitrate, magnesium nitrate, and you already have some of that if you bought it for this. So you can actually use some of this calcium nitrate and some of this magnesium nitrate to make your own um, calcium. But there's one other ingredient you need, and that's going to be something that will chelate it. Uh, you can either use iron to sodium EDTA, so it's to add a little bit of iron to it, and that will chelate it. You can buy that on Amazon for pretty cheap. Or you can try to just find pure to sodium EDTA, but remember, pure to sodium EDTA is not going to be as water soluble. You'll have to bring the water up to 10 pH first, and then dissolve the EDTA in there, let it make sure it's all nice and dissolved, and then bring the pH back down to like six or so, and then add in your calcium magnesium or calcium nitrate and your magnesium nitrate into it, uh, dissolving each each one at a time. And then you'll have your magnesium, or then you'll have your CalMag, a proper CalMag. Um, but if you use the iron EDTA, I think that's already going to be water soluble. I don't think I have to bring the pH up. So, all right, anyway, but it will add iron to it. So keep that in mind. Not much. It will add a little bit of iron though. All right. So if you've actually watched 
all that shit because that was a lot of fucking shit to watch, man. But I mean, it's I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to really make it shorter unless I just kind of just I don't know write everything down ahead of time and just kind of breeze through it super fast. But then it's like I'm not really showing you everything, and then you might be confused and like what I hate that when videos do that, like when they just shoot through everything. And I'm trying to learn something and I'm like, man, I really like uh, I don't. We went by so fast. I have to watch this like five times now. And then, and then sometimes they don't go through all the details of why I'm doing something. So I don't understand exactly why I'm doing it or what I'm exactly doing. And so I prefer it when it's more like this, where I have all the information I need. It's there for me and I can do exactly what I need to do. Well, what's this you say? So this is my nutrient line I'll be coming out with, as I talked about in another video, uh, perfect nutrients. And so if you have any ideas, if you see any of this stuff right now, you have any ideas for me, like what I can do to make it look better please let me know if, you, if there's just something that just just sticks out in a way that you don't like it. Like, I don't like that. Share that with me. Or, hey, I like that. Please share it. Please tell me. I love hearing feedback, man. Feedback is so good to hear. Um, it just feels good. So if you just want to make me feel good, just leave a quick comment on any feedback at all. Okay, so this is Colossal P, plant hormones. Do plant hormones work? I'll make another video on that. But yeah, they do. Uh, but they're really expensive. So my stuff is going to be so much more not expensive. <laughs> but anyway, if you were to, you know, want something similar, you would have to buy two products, at least two products. Terpenator, which isn't too bad in price. Terpenator is not too bad. And then you would have to also use Cannaboost, which is extremely expensive. $80 a liter, extremely expensive. But it works. Both of those products work. They have a good amount of hormones in them, and those hormones do work on most strains of marijuana and most strains of other plants. Um, but it might not always work as good as you want it to. And it does all kinds of great things. So it promotes node spacing. But anyway, my Colossal P has all that into one product, right? It has the what's in Terpenator, and I, I'll go through this in another video what all the, what, what all the hormones are called and stuff. But anyway, I just want to, I don't want, I want this video going too much longer. And uh, this is just some shame, shameless self-promotion. But I'm helping people save money, so it's like a good thing. This is hard to find this stuff. Like I would tell you how to make your own, but it's really expensive and hard. You have to buy a lot of it to make it affordable, and it's actually really expensive. And so most people just aren't going to want to do that. And it's and it's hard. So like making your own nutrient isn't too too hard, but it is time consuming. And I understand like not everyone wants to spend that time. Like you know what? I'll pay double. I'll pay double to not do all that bullshit. I just, you know, because you have to do a lot of weighing out with exact measurement and grams and stirring it. And, and, and it's kind of a process. And not everyone's, I understand like my computer, right? I used to build my own computers. And then this last time I'm like, I don't want to fucking build my computer. I just don't feel like it. I just don't want to. And so I spent an extra $400 to have it built for me. It's everything that I would have built it with. So I put, I chose all the parts and it's just, you build it, man. I'll I'll spend the extra money. It's not a big deal because I'm already spending like almost three grand on the damn thing anyway. What's four hundred dollars at that point? Um, and so, anyway, I understand if you just want to like buy stuff that works and it's all formulated for you already, then fantastic because my nutrient line is coming out soon too. So it's all formulated, and I I actually spent a long time figuring out the exact formulation where you can just use one product through the entire grow, right? So instead of using grow and bloom you just use one product that has all the amount of nitrogen i'll talk about that later maybe i'll briefly talk about it in this video but it has all this target stuff remember that target i was talking about for tomato plants so i was able to target all these percentages really well where i was able to hit that nitrogen right where you need it so you don't have to add any extra products you don't need more nitrogen literally you can just use complete a and b throughout the entire grow without really adding anything else to it if you don't want to and it's going to give you good results you can add some of my super cow mag uh, to it which would just give you calcium magnesium it doesn't give you an extra nitrogen or anything like that or you can use like botanic hairs cow mag that will give you some extra nitrogen that's really not necessary and you might get like super green plants but um you know, it's not really going to push it much because it doesn't have that much nitrogen in it, uh, PPM wise per the, what, you know, that goes into the water. Anyway, it has a great amount of your potassium, not too much like this, but really good, like 230, 240, uh, which is fantastic. And that's at the later, at the beginning stage, it's more like, you know, it's lower. It's more because we're using two milliliters of it. Also, it's really concentrated. So you're only using two milliliters per liter and then three milliliters per liter. 
And so that's really good. Basically, the same amount you'd be you'd be measuring if you're using uh, Psychoflower's nutrient. So if you're used to using Psychoflower, you won't have to change much to go to my nutrient. It's kind of the same regimen, except you don't have to use Veg and Bloom anymore. Now you just use complete A and B throughout the entire grow, and then you can add you know the cow mag that I'm, I'm gonna be making for that line, which is a little more expensive than cow mag you're used to, but that's because it's much higher quality. It's pure calcium magnesium, and uh, yeah, so. Just pure chelated magnesium and pure chelated calcium. So you're not adding any iron, you're not adding any nitrogen, you're not adding anything other than the calcium magnesium. And then my sodium is really good, not sodium, so sulfur is really good as well. And so everything everything is very well balanced and it works really good. So I, I've reached all these like numbers really close to them. And so yeah, that's good. Let's go back to the video here and finish this up. So Colossal Peak, fantastic. It's going to give you shorter nates, uh, node spacing so that you have bigger buds because the shorter the nodes are between each other, the more um, bud growth, the denser the bud, right? The more the more product you have. So it's going to be heavier buds because of that and nice, bigger, thicker, denser buds. And then you're going to have larger plants. You're going to have compact or com more compact flowers, more oil producing glands, some more oils to be producing. Your, and, and this is good for anything, by the way. Tomatoes, all that stuff. Better flavorful tomatoes in this case better smelling marijuana or stronger smelling, better smelling, more oils, so it's going to be stronger THC, more crystals, so it's going to be nice and crystally looking. Um, so all that stuff. Anyway, more roots as well, because this has a root, homo a root hormone in it as well. And so you basically stop using the root accelerator and just use this um, for the rest of the grow, and you save money that way as well. Um, this is about seven milliliters. And these numbers are just placeholder numbers, by the way. So... I think the numbers I'm going with is like a 0, 5, 8 is what I end up going with. Um, but so those are just placeholder numbers until I felt like actually putting the real numbers on there because I'm just I'm still working out the graphics. Like I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with this or if I wanted to go with with that. And I end up I think I'm decided to go with this. I mean, if you think that's a bad decision, let me know. Or if I should just put like just some, you know nice flower graphic here or something or some nice fruit or fruit and leaves or something there anyway so that's what i'm doing with all the other products um but i, I thought this was cool it kind of tells the story and uh i decided to redo the art a little bit so now it looks more like a painting and i can actually show you that really quick so as you can see it looks more like a, a painting than it does a comic book now but it's like an illustration still it's still you know it's not like Anyway, you get the idea, right? So it's more like an adult illustration than it is like a comic book. Whereas here, you can see it's more like a comic book. You can see you can see the actual ink lines and things like that. And then here, it's more like that. So I don't know what you guys think. And then here, you can see, yeah, 0, 5, 9. I think I might round it up to 9 and set it down to 8. And then the, ra the actual numbers will be on the back. It just doesn't look good if you do like 0, 5, then 8.7 or something like that. This doesn't look good for the bottle. And so I can put those actual numbers on the back of the bottle, which, by the way, most companies don't do, right? Like, it's rare that any of these numbers are whole numbers, and the, that, that is percentages. And if you look at their MPK, they're still whole numbers. They just put these numbers on the back of the bottle instead of showing you the actual numbers, so it's not quite accurate. And they're legally allowed to do that to, like, I think nitrogen can be 0.67%, with, and you don't have to list it at all. So some something can say zero, and it actually has 0.67% nitrogen. That's kind of you know, a significant amount of nitrogen to account for. But anyway, so there you go. Flower girl. So I think that, I think it's, I think it came up pretty good. If you don't like it, let me know. What should I do different? Should I just put some um, other different kind of graph? My, I, my other idea is I don't really like to, the, the small big tomato. I think if I don't try to tell a story with it, I'll just put, you know, some like big piece of fruit here or something. Um, I already have a big tomato on my cow mag, so I don't know. All right, so let's run through the rest of this video. I don't know if you guys are interested in more of this stuff. Let me know. Um, so this is gonna be a this will all and a lot of this stuff is gonna be available like really soon here. Um, so yeah, pay attention to the website perfectsunled.com. I'll have a page that's called nutrients on there for now, and then eventually I think I'll do its own website. But anyway, so here is the uh, root growth platinum. Obviously, this is gonna be your roots accelerator um, that you're gonna get. You know, that's gonna be better than roots accelerator. The reason why it's better than roots accelerator is one, I use more of the endol 3 butyric acid which is the plant hormone that stimulates root growth this has been proven by science to actually work and and roots roots accelerator does work by the way i've, I've used it 
many times, um, but it's you know kind of expensive, and so I would only use it uh, here and there. Well, so what what I do is because the colostal P has the same root hormone in it, not not quite as concentrated, but it's going to help your root grow throughout the entire life of the plant. So you don't have to use this the whole grow. You only use this for the very beginning, for like the first week or two. And that's going to give you nice explosive roots, you know, in, in that beginning where they're really growing mo- most of the roots where you need it in higher concentrations. And then and then you use colostal P throughout the rest of the grow. So um, anyway, this is all supplemental stuff. It, like not, It's not absolutely necessary, but if you want like the best possible stuff, then this is good. And then I add the fulvic acid, which by the way, is a natural chelate. So it will actually chelate your, your nutrients. So if you're using like a cheaper line of nutrients and you add this to it, it's going to chelate all those nutrients. Um, fulvic acid is a really good natural chelating, chelating agent. Not quite as stable as EDTA, um, like at higher pHs, but it's not too big of a deal because you're probably not going to go up into seven anyways when you're doing any sort of hydroponic growing. Like that would just be super bad if you did that. And anyway, so it has all the B vitamins, right? So not just like B1 or B2, like all the B vitamins, which helps the hormones work, right? So it helps the plant use the hormones properly. So it's not that it's not that B vitamins by themselves really do anything like help with transplant shock. A lot of that's been not proven scientifically and has been actually shown scientifically not to do anything. So Super Thrive by itself is really just kind of a pointless product to buy and use because it doesn't really do anything. But when you add the B vitamins with hormones, these kind of work together. They have a good synergy together. So that's why that is in there. And so this is lacking from the fulvic acid and a full line of B vitamins is lacking from Roots Accelerator Gold, which costs quite a lot of money per, per liter, um, per 100 milliliters. So 100 milliliter bottle, they, they're charging like 30 bucks. And I'm going to try to charge less than that. Anyway, this is going to be the label that's a wrapper on the bottle. And then the bottles are going to be aluminum, which is really cool. And so basically like Roots Accelerator. So I'm basically like, hey, Roots Accelerator, I need to bring you some competition so people can have something that's better and either better and, and, and for a little bit less money, hopefully. So anyway, so that's that. Um, also my complete A and B. Uh, these numbers here, let's see here. What numbers do I have now? I, those are just placeholder numbers because when you're doing artwork, you don't want to think about stuff. So you just drop some numbers on it until you want to come back and add the proper numbers. And let's see here, let's do, uh, also here's the CalMag um, image. Record bigger for this part so I can actually show you it better. So that's what I came up with for the CalMag. This is actually um, a graphic I did myself, and this is actually accurate. So this is the um, chemical compound for magnesium disodium EDTA, and that's the proper thing for it. This is an actual chelated um, magnesium, so there's no nitrogen or nothing in it. It's just it's just magnesium, so it's not a magnesium nitrate. And uh, yeah, so I plan. On, I, I mean, I'm still debating whether I should just come out with a normal CalMax, so the price can be the same, or if I can come out with this stuff, which is going to be super absorbable by, by the plants. In fact, it, I think I need to make it less strong because. That way people can use the same amount that they're used to using, but without like overpowering their plants because they won't need as much of this stuff because also I'm using the same version of calcium as the magnesium here. And the, stru- the actually the structure is very similar. It's a calcium to sodium uh, EDTA. And look those up. They're super expensive. Like they're very expensive. That's why no one uses them in their product. Because they're out, they're outrageous. Even if you buy them in bulk, they're still really expensive. Even if you buy it in super bulk, they're still outrageously expensive. Um, it, it it will greatly increase the price per bottle, and you have to also calculate for shipping and all that kind of stuff as well. Because, you know, that, if you're just selling it locally, cool. But you know, you have to kind of ship your products places typically, like to either either ship them to stores and in bulk. But and if I, if you're shipping individually, but I did find some shipping hacks that allows me to ship it to you guys for like eight dollars and seventy cents per liter. And if you buy more than one liter at a time, let's say you're buying A, B, and Calmag or something like that, I can pack all that into like one one eight dollars seventy cents pack. I think I can fit three or probably two bottles in that maybe. Or I can use a slightly bigger bag or one of their bigger. Anyway, it's the USPS's. Um, priority mail and the, the 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 flat rate stuff so you can actually did you know the 14 or 15 uh inch by like nine inch envelope that's called the legal flat rate envelope that's like eight dollars and 70 cents to ship you can put anything you want in there like it doesn't have to be legal documents 
you can literally put anything you want in there, even, even liquids. It's, it, I actually looked all this up and it's fine. So you can even put shoes in there. People sh ship shoes in those bags. And so instead of trying to ship your shoes in a box, you put them inside of that bag and you can ship shoes for $8.70 right now. At least that's the price as of right now it might go up. Uh, it's gone up so much in the last year. It's crazy. But anyway, so I should be able to cut out on shipping a lot. And then I think what I'm going to do is put like, super low shipping and like maybe just charge like a flat rate of five dollars and then i'll eat the rest and the cost of the product but that was going to greatly increase some of these stuff like i really i originally wanted to like give such good prices on stuff but then i'm like oh man i don't know if i can do that because you you, you spend two dollars per on the bottles right so the plastic bottles i'm spending two dollars a piece on those and that was buying in bulk by the way so $2 a piece on those. I source those in America. So everything I'm sourcing is in America. Everything except for the aluminum bottles. The aluminum bottles were the only thing I sourced from China um, because I got such a good deal on them. I couldn't find a good deal in America for aluminum bottles. Um, but everything else is sourced in America. So, And all this is going to be made here. It is all made here. Um, what I mean by will be made is when I you know, make a big, big amount of batches. Instead of just making it for myself, I'll be making more so that we can sell it. Um, anyway, so... Yeah, all made in America, all sourced, all the ingredients and stuff sourced and made in America. So very cool, all high quality stuff here. And so anyway, um, I might be able to offer this at the same price as Botanicare, it's twenty dollars, um, but it's higher quality, much higher quality. You're not adding iron, you're not adding nitrogen, so you're just adding exactly what the plant needs. But at the same time, I'm like going over my numbers. I'm like, hmm, they might need a little extra nitrogen. You know, maybe so. That might be something. Uh, I might come up with two products. Maybe I don't know. Um, we'll see. Maybe a cow mag that that's normal, like a normal cow mag. Um, and then I also thought about doing a cow mag that's that is using fulvic acid because fulvic acid will actually uh, it has a much easier time uh, if you do calcium sulfate and magnesium sulfate. It has a much easier time breaking those down and and not break them down but you know chelating them um but i think sometimes the the ph has to be anyway a little more complicated to do but it will give you like a really good just natural because fulvic acid is a natural chelating agent and you can put that in your soil and not have to worry about it so i'm thinking about doing that for people that like to grow in soil um or you yeah, know anyway i'm just the stuff i'm thinking about and i'm rambling to you guys and you're probably like fucking whatever dude shut up i don't care about this stuff so i thought that was kind of cool um kind of what the you know, just kind of a mock-up of what the kind of these are the kind of bottles that I'm going with, and they are they are black. So this will be for you know the neutral lines of that, and then for the gallons, it'll be white bottles. And so three zero zero is the the final number. This is what I actually when I make it, this is how I do it. So this is the actual number, not just a placeholder number, because I was I wasn't I was just focusing anyway. So that's what I decided to go with. I think it's pretty cool. The reason why I went with the with the green tomato and red tomato is I'm hoping this kind of visually says this is veg and bloom. This is complete A. You know, this is for the entire grow, for for your grow and for your bloom, or for your veg and for your for your for your flowering. And then um, there's also complete B, which has has the same graphic because it's saying the same thing. This is just part B, which you feed in equal amounts, and still the same graphic, so it kind of shows the same idea. And uh, two four eight. I think that's pretty close. I think I can't remember. If this is uh, five. No, I think this is six now. Yeah, I think it's so. Well, this is still two because the other one's three. But my overall is like a five, six, eight. Um, I, I'm kind of rounding this number. But yeah, the other number is actually exactly six. And then this this number is pretty much exactly five. Well, not not here, but you know between the two A and B three and two is pretty accurate. And then this number is a little bit rounded, but I'll put the actual amount on the back of the bottle, but it's pretty close. So yeah, that's all of that stuff. If you have any ideas or anything, just leave comments. If you have it. It's just, just, just leave a comment, man. Just leave a fucking comment. <laughs> I like comments. It's so cool. I like, I just like reading comments. Like even if it's just like, hello, man like anything but if you have any ideas at all you want to share i love i love reading them it's fantastic and uh yeah so i also thought about just printing the stickers myself or or having like someone i know that works in the printing industry print a bunch of stickers for me some high quality um vinyl stickers and then i can just offer those as a if you want to buy some stickers to customize your stuff you know 
like people like to customize stuff, I guess. So this, you know, the stickers allow you to customize your life, not just, I mean, I don't know how many people want to stick stickers on their lights or on their nutrient line, you know, nutrient products, but maybe they do. But I mean, it's just cool to stick on other stuff in your house. Like, and people want to show like, this is part of my life. I like growing and I like marijuana. So I thought, I thought one cool one would be a heartbeat, but instead of the marijuana, I'm sure you've seen that t-shirt, just 420. So heartbeat with a 420 in it. And then, you know, some cool, some cool marijuana leaf type stuff. That's more simple. Maybe some, um, uh, maybe even make some perfect nutrient stickers and just like have them so I can put them in orders and stuff for people that might want it, or they can pay extra and have it, have a couple stickers dropped in there. Um, anyway, so what do you think about stickers? I can do some cool designs. So it'd be kind of neat. I'm trying to think of different designs that would be cool. What kind of design, if you do like the idea of stickers and t-shirts, what kind of ideas do you think? Like, what would you like to see? What would you think would be cool? What would you want to customize? If you had stickers to customize stuff with, you just want to maybe customize your laptop. You want to put some cool sticker on it. What do you want? Something that just says like a pot leaf with 420 or maybe something more graphic with like an actual character. Um, yeah. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. All right. Cool. Thanks. All right. There is one equation I forgot to, to talk about, and that's this equation here. So this equation is used to figure out how much of the nutrient you make. So whatever nutrient you decide to make, this is how you figure out, well, how much of that nutrient do I need to reach a certain target PPM per my final watering, right? So let's say you're gonna make a gallon to water with. Well, how do I figure out if I want to reach, like remember that the graphic, what if I wanted to reach a certain target here? Like I wanted to reach exactly 120 PPMs of nitrogen. I want to make sure that my plants are getting 100 p 120 ppm of nitrogen. Well, how do I do that if I know I make this stock solution and I know this is how much percent is in my stock solution because I just taught how to do all that and I'm adding so much of this to my water. Well, how much of that do I need to add to my water to, to achieve this? Well, here's how you figure that out. So this is the equation I came up with. So basically you calculate the ppm of nutrient in the solution by the milliliters per liter and we can just scale that up. So if you want to know, well, what would this be per gallon? Uh, you would just scale it up to gallons, right? Because this is going to give you the amount of amount of PPM um, per that liter. But then you just you just take this number, and multiply it by 3.8 if you want it by gallon, right? And that's going to still be the same PPM. So once you do this equation, then you just multiply this by however much you want, and then that PPM is going to be the same, right? It's not going to change. Okay, so you do the milliliter per liter times percent in solution times 100, and that will equal the PPM. So what does that mean? So if I have, if I'm using three milliliters of my product, right, which is what we made that for, so three milliliters per liter, right? So I have my stock solution, right? Let's say you're using like Floranova or you're using this A and B that you just made. And if I'm using three milliliters per liter, which means I'm using about 11 milliliters per gallon, so if I'm using three milliliters per liter, then that's the number I'm using, right? So that's how much I'm putting into my liter of water, or that's the same thing as saying I'm putting 11 milliliters per gallon, right? So that's, if I want to make a gallon of water to water my plants with, I'm going to use 11 milliliters of my stock solution that I just made, which means I'm going to be using three milliliters per liter. Okay. That's that number. And then how much how much is in my product, my, my base solution? Do I have 4% nitrogen, 5% nitrogen? Well, if I'm using Floranova, I have 4% nitrogen, right? So that's where the 4%, four, the four that's the second part of the solution. And then the final part is, well, the calculation, the final part of the calculation is just times 1,000 uh, because we're, we're converting milliliters to milligrams, and that's why that's there. And so anyway, this is the equation, it's super simple. The first number is the amount that you're going to be watering with per, per liter. Right, so per 1,000 milliliters. So per liter, and then the second number is the percent that's in your solution. Right, so whatever your whatever your nutrient has. In this case, um, it, ours was really close to 4% that we just learned how to do. And so you do like 3.8. So times 3.8%. So you on the calculator you would type three times. And then you would do whatever number this is supposed to be the percent. So let's say it's 3.8, 3.8, and then hit the percent symbol and then hit equals, and then times 1,000, and then hit equals, and then you have 120 ppm. Or in this case, it'd be a little bit different because you're doing it by 3.8%, right? So if it, hap if it happens to have 4%, which by the way, Floranova probably has like 3.8 or something like that. They probably just rounded it up because they're allowed to do that. 
and it makes it better, more more on the bottle. I think on the back of the bottle, they should they should have to say exactly what's in it though, and they should or they should at least have the decency to do that, but they don't. So three times four time three times four percent, then times a thousand. So it's a really simple equation. And then if you want to know, um, well, well, this is this is how you figure out. But how do you figure out if you're going to be like, well, I'm going to be watering by gallon. I'm used to watering by gallon. Well, how many milliliters do you, you do per gallon? Just divide that by 3.8, and that gives you the amount per milliliter, right? It's easy because there's 3.8 milliliters, approximately 3.8 milliliters per gallon. And so if you're used to doing it by gallon, if say you're used to watering 11 milliliters per gallon, you divide that by 3.8, and that gives you three. Boom. Right to rock and roll, right? So it's pretty easy to do. And that's how you figure that, that's how you figure out how many ppms are going to be in your final watering the what you're watering with, right? So this is let's say I'm making a gallon that I'm watering with. I do my equation here first, I then take this number, multiply it by 3.8, and that gives me how many milliliters I'm doing per gallon. I make a gallon batch. If I make a gallon batch, now I know that nitrogen is going to have 120 ppm. So right? I'm going to have 120 ppm in that. And that. And if you you multiply this by 20, right, and make that much water, then it's still going to be 120 ppm, right? That, nothing changed. You can just take once you have figured this out, you can take this number and multiply it by however many liters of water you want to use, um, you know, several gallons, whatever, and it's going to have 120 ppm of whatever this is. In this case, nitrogen. And so you can do the same thing if you want to figure out how what's the ppm per calcium. If you know how much calcium's in your solution, then you just plug in the numbers, right? So I'm gonna, I'm going to be watering, let's say. Let's say you're using Botanic Care's CalMag. Real quickly, just to show you what I'm talking about. So from memory, um, Botanic Care's CalMag, you can water with one milliliter. Um, you can water with up to three milliliters, I think, per gallon, or up to five milliliters per gallon. So let's just reduce that to one milliliter per liter, right? Which would be about three point something milliliters per gallon, 3.8 or whatever it is. Anyway, so let's take that number. So now we have one here, right? So let's go and open up the calculator even. I can show this to you in real time real quick. For some people, they're like, dude, I don't want to see this. I don't care. I understand. You don't have to watch this part. All right, so we got one one milliliter, um, and so that would give us about 3.8 um, milliliters per gallon. So still under four milliliters per gallon that we're watering with. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty normal. But let's say you're only watering with like two milliliters per gallon, then this would be 0.5, right? Anyway, so... We'll take one. Actually, let's go ahead and do that because I would typically only water with like two milliliters of CalMag per gallon. So let's do um, 0.5. So we have 0.5 for our first number because we just take that two and divide it by by the 3.8. Actually, if you divide by 3.8, but it's close enough, we'll just divide it by four. All right, so we got 0.5. And then what percent of calcium, CalMag rather, um, well, in this case, we'll say calcium. What percent of calcium is in Botanic Care's CalMag? 3.2%. So we multiply that by 3.2%. And then we're going to times that by 1,000 in order to get... This will basically gives us... This basically converts that... Times it by 1,000 converts that number to milligrams per liter, right? Because the first number was milliliters per liter. And then we're times it by 1,000 because how many milliliters per liter per milligrams per liter is 1,000? The difference is 1,000. And so now, because there's you know a thousand milliliters per, or a thousand milligrams per milliliter anyway, so you times it by a thousand, that gives us the, the amount of ppm that solution. So you can see Botanic Care is giving us, or, well if we only, if we feed it at only uh, two milliliters per gallon, is giving us an extra sixteen uh, ppm in our solution. So if you go here, here's our calcium. If we have a pretty high calcium need. You know, toward especially with tomatoes, toward the end of the tomato plant life, in our in our solution, we can we can figure out how much is in our solution as well by doing using the same equation. In the back of your bottle, how much calcium is in it? So with Floranova, we can actually figure out how much calcium they have, and I think it's actually way under this number. Well, so 16 might not be enough, so we might want might want more than that, and our magnesium might be a little bit low as well. And so, okay, we our plant needs more of that stuff. Oh, that's what the Epsom salts we're looking at. So our plant might need more of that stuff, so we we don't have to water with more of it. So let's go ahead and say, well, what if we just go ahead and water with the um, the recommended amount, you know, between three and five per gallon, and let's do the 3.8. So that will give us exactly one milliliter per liter, right? Because we're, already, we're you know remember times times 3.8 would give us that 3.8 milliliters per per gallon. Okay, so now we have one here. 
And we still know it's still times 3.2%. That doesn't change. That's how much is in Botanicares. And then we need to times it by 1,000 or in order to get – now we have 32. And we already knew that was going to be the case because we pretty much just, you know, used twice as much, right? So 16 and 16 is 32. So now we have 32 ppm of calcium extra. So that's pretty good. That's actually not bad. That's about where you want to be, I think. I don't think you want to go over that. Um, you probably have enough calcium – in your product to get pretty close to this when you're using more of it, like when you're using higher concentrations of it. So you apply like when you bump it up to like, you know, 13, 14, 15 milliliters per gallon, you're probably already getting pretty close to this, but you can figure it out. If you, if it tells you the amount of calcium in the bottle, you can take that number and figure it out. So actually let's do that really quickly. Um, just to show you how you can do this. Um, I like learning by, let's go and go like this. Um, well, you can't see all my screen now. It's okay. I'll show you what, what's important. Flora Nova General Hydroponics. I like searching by talking. It's just easier. Go to their website. You're not going to be able to see the whole screen, like I said, but it's not a big deal. You just scroll down here and you go to their nutrient line. Products here. Nutrients. And then I'm going to go to their Flora Nova. And then click on that page. And I'm going to scroll down and click on this. No, that's not the thing I want to click on. Click on this. Sorry about the dogs. And then I'm going to scroll down and there's a there's this right here. Full analysis. We're going to view the label. And you okay, you can't see the percentage over here, but I can. I guess I can reduce the size here. All right, so you can see here um, their calcium is at 4% and their nitrogen is at 4%. So actually, if we do this for calcium, we also know the exact amount of PPM per nitrogen. So they're having the same amount of PPM per nitrogen and calcium in their product. Let's go ahead and, and do this calculation using their recommended for most plants during later growth at 2.5 milliliters a liter um, and see what that gives us. And maybe hopefully it's not too much nitrogen. And maybe we'll even try 3.75. Anyway, it's really easy to do. So using that equation... We know the, the numbers that we have here are going to be the 4% and then the 2.5 milliliters per liter. Actually, they conveniently, they actually have it per liter right here for us, so we don't have to do any math for that. If it told us the amount of milliliters per gallon, we'd have to do it divided by 3.8. All right, so 2.5, so we just got the 2.5 times 4% because that's how much is in this product. And then we got to times that by 1,000 to get the PPM. So we have 100 ppm. So 100 ppm of nitrogen and 100 ppm of calcium. That's actually not very good for later stages of growth. Um, as you can see, we're at the lower end. So especially if you're growing tomatoes, this is not good for tomatoes. You definitely need more nitrogen. So we're going to have to go to the higher number. But also for calcium, you can see it's not good. This is not even good for the younger stage. You definitely need to use CalMag with this product. I think even if we use the 3.75 liters, but let's do that because that will probably put us in more practical ranges for what we need. And by the way, this is pretty much the same for marijuana, so that's why I'm showing it. Like marijuana needs a decent amount of nitrogen. You want you want to be like about 120 to 150 throughout the whole grow, pretty much. But let's go ahead and do uh, let's water at 3.75 milliliters per liter. And that we just do that times that by 3.8 to get how many milliliters per gallon. Anyway, and then you want to times that by 4%, and then times that by 1,000. So we have 150 milliliters. That's that's good. This is more where we want to be. I'm at 150 ppm. So that's more closely to where we want to be. 150 ppm. That's pretty good for the entire grow. Um, so you are using more of their nutrient to do that though. So yeah, it's not going to last as long. And you might even like use three milliliters you know, per liter for like a lot of the flowering stage for marijuana and then maybe bump it to three point whatever. And so as you bump up that, you want to, you, you can turn down your CalMag, the amount of CalMag you're adding. You know, like add more CalMag toward the beginning. So when you're using less nutrient, add more CalMag. When you're using more nutrient, add less CalMag, right? Just kind of adjust like that. And you can do all the math to figure out exactly what you need to do to reach your target numbers. Now that also means we're getting 150 ppm of calcium. And that puts us right where we need to be. Um, without having to add any extra CalMag. Now, if you're growing tomatoes or something, maybe add a little extra CalMag to the end here. Um, maybe even actually, if you're growing, and also remember, if you're using regular CalMag, like Botanicus CalMag, they are giving you a little bit of nitrogen, not a whole lot, but they are giving you some extra nitrogen. So um, if you water this stuff with like three milliliters, then you can definitely add the CalMag to make up for that nitrogen and calcium. 
if you water with 3.75 milliliters, you probably don't really need much extra of anything, but maybe a little bit of CalMag. And so that's good to do those numbers. But let's say um, you like, okay, I need to add some CalMag though. How much do I need to add? So let's say we're doing at three milliliters, right? So you're doing three milliliters, three milliliters a liter, which will be about 11 milliliters a gallon. And then we're going to do that um, times 4% and then times 1,000. So now we're at 120 ppm. That's really good. That's kind of like where you want to be with calcium and, and nitrogen throughout a lot of the grow. And but in the flower, they they might need a little bit more nitrogen and they might need a little bit more um, calcium, in which case you can just use regular CalMag. But mainly it might be this calcium that they need more. So maybe you can use like super CalMag, like something I'll be coming out with, and that will have you know just CalMag, no nitrogen or anything else in it. All right. So how how do we? Let's say we want to bring this up to about 150. So we need like 30. We need like 30 extra ppm of of the calcium. So we knew that if we're feeding with one milliliter per per liter of CalMag, then we times that by 3.2 percent, and then times that by a thousand, and we know that gave us the 32 um, extra ppm. So it's not quite enough, and that would be at about uh, you know 3.8 milliliters per gallon it's like okay so how do we how do we, how do we do that and it can't really reverse it so much um but what we could do is go well let, what if we did like 1.5 milliliters per liter and then you just times that by 3.8 to figure out how much per gallon so 5.7 what if we did or what if we did their their higher recommendation the five divided by 3.8 gives us 1.31 um i don't really want to use these kind of numbers but let's go 1.3 uh, milliliters per liter, and we're going to times that. This will give us five liters per gallon, and we're going to times that by their percent, which is 3.2 percent of calcium, and then times that by a thousand. Now we have 41. So now we got pretty close. So we're pretty close to adding that extra uh, 50 ppm, and this will be fine actually. 140 ppm, totally fine. You don't have to go higher than that, um, even for the later stages with tomatoes. Like you don't have to go all the way to 200. Uh, this is pre a pretty high value, but this is like maybe tomatoes that are really, really... I mean, th th they have shown that tomatoes really like calcium when it goes toward the end. The thing is, you don't want to add a whole lot more magnesium. And the problem is we're also adding magnesium, right? So let's go ahead and see, like, what are we doing there then? Are we going way overboard with our magnesium? I mean, it's not going to like poison or, or make it toxic. You can, it's just, that's how much they're probably going to use. And so there, there'll be some leftover magnesium the plants aren't going to eat. And so fly to drain is perfect, especially with like um, complete A and B, the neutral line I'll be coming out with. That will actually, ha it, all ha it has natural accumulating agents into it. So it's kind of like its own uh, flush. You know, you can basically, you can make a flush using just fulvic acid, by the way. So like fluoroclean, like something that just pulls all the nutrients out of the stuff because basically it's just chelates. And the chelates pull onto the metals all the salts that are stuck in your soil or in your cocoa, and it strips it and makes it, you know, it's, it works much better than just using water. Um, but you can actually make your own just using a fulvic acid. And that would be, be natural. And it's not going to harm your soil if you decide you're going to use that soil uh, again, like re repurpose it or something. Anyway, so... Let's go ahead and do this. So let's go ahead with the three milliliters. So what was that again? If we did the three milliliters, and then we need to do the amount of magnesium now. Magnesium is 2%. So it's going to be half of what we had before, but I can't remember what it was exactly. So three milliliters uh, times 2% times 1,000 gives us 60 ppm. That pretty much puts us right where we need to be. We really need to be more than that. So if you can just find like a, a, a calcium supplement or make your own. You know, like if you know, if you know, you're, you're, we are the new, the, ugh, the lineup that we already made has this much magnesium in it, right? So you already know you have enough magnesium for your plants. You don't have to use CalMag, right? You're kind of wasting product there. Why not just make your own calcium supplement, right? Make your own, just make a supplement. You can actually just use the cal, the calcium nitrate you had. That's add a little bit of nitrogen to it, which is fine because we're kind of on the lower side of nitrogen anyway. So it kind of adds a little nitrogen to it, but you also are adding some extra calcium to it that you need for those later stages of growth. 
And uh, yeah, I mean, this has more than enough calcium for all the beginning stages. It's only toward the later stages you'll you have to add that cal, that extra calcium. Now you could just use cow mag and it, it should be fine. But I'm just showing you like if you wanted to get the exact numbers, you can do something like this. And this that's what this equation allows you to do. It allows you to kind of really fine tune um, your nutrient feeding regimen so you can give them exactly what they need and not waste any money. Okay, cool. That's it for sure this time. Double V's.